All right, guys, so we're back with another video and I'm going to show you guys how to use express routers. So you can think of them like mini apps and it allows us to create more modular and allows us to create more modular routes because right now we have everything in just one file and this looks really bad. Like typically we should have only the main middlewares being registered in app.js. We shouldn't really have our routes over here. So let's fix that. So what I'm going to do is let me zoom in first. I'm going to create a new folder called routes. And we're going to create a couple of routes. Let's create a user's route. And let's create a post's route. Okay. And honestly, I'm just going to go ahead and I might just delete all of this or I'll comment all this out. Okay. So let's just pretend like none of this code exists. And we're just going to refactor everything. One by one. So what we're going to do is we're going to first go inside users.js and we're going to import the router class. Okay, so this is the router class and we're just going to create a new instance of it. Like this. You don't need the new keyword actually. You don't need the new keyword with this. I think this is actually a function. So you can just invoke it and it'll return uh, the router object. So you can see that we can actually reference a lot of the same methods. I mean, I think all of it is actually the same as the express object itself. So we can use the get method for this route and we can have our request handler function. So let's just send a status code of 200 back. And now we need to export our router so we can import it in app.js or wherever we want to register this. So before we go into posts, let's go into app.js and move this all the way down. So we're going to go ahead and let me import that right up top over here. So const users route equals require routes slash users. So we are passing in the relative path to users.js. And I think right down over here, because we, you want to make sure that we're registering the middleware first, right before we register the routes. So we're going to register the route by simply saying app.use. And we're going to say, hey, look, for whatever route we want to register it. So for users, what I want to do is I want to register users for this route. So every single request that is going to be handled in this router, it needs to be prefixed with the slash users route. And we're just going to pass in the router that we exported, which is this variable over here. That's a router. And there we go. All right. So now if I go into Postman, if I wanted to visit this route, this is the base route. This is the slash users route. Okay. If I were to get rid of this, we wouldn't be able to retrieve any route at all. So let me add another route before we do anything else. So let's say, for example, the users route might have another sub route. For example, maybe you slash users slash posts. Maybe I'll get all the users posts. Just an example. We'll just say route posts just for simple demonstration. So let's go ahead and go to localhost port 3000 slash users. So you can see that's going to say, okay, so that's hitting this route over here. Okay. We are registering the slash users route with this entire router. So if I just did localhost port 3000 slash, it's going to say cannot get because that route does not exist. So now if I go to slash users, it's going to go back to slash users. If I do slash posts, it's going to return that JSON that we returned inside over here. So hopefully that gives you a brief understanding of how the router works. If I try to go to post, notice how there's no route for post because we haven't handled that route. Okay. Remember this is slash users slash posts. Okay. If I actually did slash users slash posts inside here, then when we visit the route, it's going to be slash users slash users posts like that. Okay. So every single route inside here is supposed to be prefixed with slash users when we visit it, when we make the actual request, but you don't actually prefix it with the actual route itself. That's what this app.use is going to do. So you don't have to worry about that. So let me go ahead and do the same thing for posts. So we can just copy and paste this entire thing. And maybe for posts, we can say a uh, post title and we can add like a route parameter and we can just say title some random post. So now I can save and notice how we need to go and we have to go back into our app.js. So app.use and we need to register a route, any route we want, but it just can't conflict with the previous one. So we'll just use slash posts and we need to import the post route. So we'll just do const posts route equals require 
dot slash routes posts. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and save this. So I should be able to visit my routes without any of them being affected at all. So I can go to slash posts. That would work. Title. So title route doesn't actually exist. We need the route parameter. So I'm just going to type in a random thing. Uh, let's see. Posts title. Oh, it's post title. Posts post title. There we go. So it's slash posts. Remember, it's prefixed with the actual base route URL. The, or the base path and then post title that's coming from right over here post title and then this is the route parameter and if that matches then it's going to send us back this json object so yeah you can see how much more clean our application looks now because i can take literally all of this logic and i can move it into the corresponding files okay now typically you don't really want to have your api sending back data for the actual slash url i mean you could of course we can obviously change up a lot of stuff with our files like i can move all of these functions into like a middlewares folder and then import them wherever i need it to be and yeah so pretty much this is all application level middleware we can also add middleware for routes too i know i mentioned it briefly in the middleware video but we can add router level middleware so we can do that for the user route so so route.use or router.use and I'll just say console log request me to slash users route. Okay. And of course, this is obviously just a simple log. You probably want to do something like checking to see if the session exists before they visit this route. And don't worry, when we actually build out a real application, all of this will come in together. So don't worry, we're going to be doing this over and over again. So let's go ahead and visit users. So uh, let's see. I don't have a route. Uh, I do. But why is that not? Oh, you know why? So it's hitting this middleware correctly. Okay, good. But we need to call the next function in order for it to go to the next middleware. And that next middleware function is basically this last callback function that is to be invoked. And this is what's going to send back the 200 status. So now if I click send, it's going to send us OK. And you can see that our middleware function is being hit request made to users route. And yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to routers. Really, there's nothing super complicated with it. And they're actually, they're very useful. I enjoy using routers all the time. And in fact, I use it for literally all my applications because like I said, because you want to write modular code, you don't want to keep everything in one file. So that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in my next one. Peace.